Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. Okay, I'm going to put this card together today. This, um, my whole purpose behind this one was I wanted to make it look kind of like, just to give the idea of a framed photograph, not even a framed photograph, a matted photograph. So we're gonna make this mat and um, watercolor our background. Let me start. These are the liquid colors we have. These are the ones I'm using. Lovely Blue, Lemon Drop, Catalina Splash, and Limeade Splash. So what we're going to do, I've taken this piece of foam board and I've taped a piece of our water, our color splash paper. That's our watercolor paper. And the size of this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And I usually don't that's not a regular size that I use, but for this, it worked. So you're also going to need some kind of a palette. And we did just get a new palette, but I don't have that yet. I'm going to have to order that. So instead, I'm using a piece of whipped cream cardstock. That's our white cardstock. And I've just laminated it. Um... So that's what I'm going to use for a palette. You can also use, we've got these clear view sheets. You get one of these with every stamp set that you order. You get one of these. That's what your stamp comes on. So you can use those too. But um, this is what I chose to use. Okay, so I've also got a little bit of water here. And I've got a paintbrush. This is our angled paintbrush. And I've got a blending brush. I've also got our mister. This thing is so cool because look how small it is. And it's just a little spray bottle. And so it just fits anywhere. It doesn't take up much room. I went to the amusement park a couple weeks ago and it was so hot. And I honestly thought, I wish I would have had this with me. This missed my face. So what I'm going to do to start out with is we're going to take just... A drop of these colors and put them on our palette and just make sure you've got enough room between them so they're not, not going to all blend together and then I'm going to take my mister and I'm going to mist next to my liquid color because if I if I mist right on it it'll splash up so now I'm going to take my blending tool I'm going to start with the lightest color and I'm going to mix those I think I'll use that for the green as well now I'm going to rinse it out. We'll use our lighter, lovely blue. That's a really subtle blue. And then our Catalina Splash. Okay. So I'm going to rinse out my blending tool. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mister and I'm going to spray my watercolor paper and I'm going to give it a pretty good spray because I want it to be nice and wet so now I'm just going to go over that make sure that paper is nice and wet okay now I'm going to take my blending tool and I'm going to start with the lightest color and as I drop color into this think about what you're going for let's see here's my card I am my idea is a branch coming obviously we're taking a picture of the branch and it's got blossoms on it but what would be behind it I'm thinking there would be maybe some sunlight peeking through um, trees and sky. So that's what I'm gonna keep in mind when I put my colors down. So I'm gonna start with my sunlight 
and just you're gonna drop them and the water will spread that around I have a little bit of green still on this but it's not gonna matter so there's my yellow and I'm not gonna put a ton of yellow this lightens a little bit as it dries so keep that in mind um, now my second lightest color I'll go in with some of this lovely blue And then my darker Catalina Splash. Now we're starting to get some more vibrant color in this. And you want it to spread. This isn't spreading a ton, but I think that's okay. It's good. These on the outside are good. Um, honestly, I think I want a little more color with this. And then... I'm gonna end up with my green. And honestly, you're you're gonna cut that circle, so all of this isn't gonna show. But I have been known to turn it over to end up using the bottom because I liked it better. So I just do the whole sheet just in case. And then if you want some darker green, just add some of that Catalina Blue to your green. And see how that just spreads. And if it's not spreading for some reason, it's because you don't have enough water. And so you're going to want to just mist it again. And it'll spread really nicely. It'll be great. So after you get done with that, you're going to want to let it dry completely, absolutely completely dry. And um, if you want, when it gets to this point, you can kind of let it kind of drip so that it's not so spotty. I usually do that just a little and then if you have tons and tons of water you can blot it so you're gonna put that aside and let that dry completely and I've already got one on this side it's bloomed here that's not even gonna show and the blooms are not hurting anything for this so we'll take this off and we will use this one just to save time. Okay, it's like five in the morning, so if I sound like I've got a cold or I've been up smoking all night, <laughs> um, that's why. So if you want, you can save those colors because as soon as you get them wet, they'll work again. So if you're going to be using them later go ahead and save them okay this one didn't turn out my favorite but it's okay because I can totally make it work so look at that perfect and I always do this I always try it actually hmm I always try it both ways to see which one I like the best think actually even though that is a bloom I don't mind the bloom and I'm gonna use that a bloom is when your paint the water makes your paint spread and it kind of gives you this edge but I think on this it's pretty so next let's do our next step so pretend this is drying and the next step is to cut our mat. And this is the way I did that. I used our journey circles and I used this three inch circle. It's the second to the biggest circle. And what I did was I took that and I just went in 
between these two lines equally and then the same distance from the top. It ends up being about a half, uh, sorry, about a quarter of an inch. So then I taped my die to the paper and send it through my die cutting machine. Here's my circle, save that because you're gonna be able to use circles, white circles, you're gonna be using that for sure. So this is how I lined them up so they'd be perfect because you're going to glue them one on top of each other and stack them. So you want them to be really uniform because you don't want any weird layers showing through. So this is what I did. I simply, after I cut the first one, took a pencil and traced that circle on all the others. And before you do it, you want to make sure they're really straight. All the edges are straight because then it'll cut great. And honestly, after I cut that out, I didn't even have anything to erase because it cut it right out. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to line that die up, make sure it's absolutely even and then run that through the die cutter and you'll be great. Everything will look perfect. So you're gonna wanna make five of these. Glue them together. Your last one you're going to want to put in to our petals wall folder. And I put it in, I thought it looked prettier this way. So I put that through and embossed that so your top layer is going to be embossed. And the way you do that, this is the way you do all the layers, but I just saved this last layer so you don't have to sit through all of them. You're gonna take your Journey Craft Glue and you wanna make sure that this is an unbroken edge because you don't want to miss any little edges because since you're layering them, they'll pop up. So as long as you get glue everywhere, it'll be perfect. So then here, take the layer that you're putting on. And again, you're doing this with every layer. You're just saving the embossed layer for last. And I just go around it and make sure it's all straight. And just push that down. This glue's really quick drying. You'll love this glue if you don't already have it. Okay. So there's our mat, all done. And we're going to take and do exactly the same thing when we mat it on this. So, again, make sure there's not a broken edge. You want it to be a complete line so you don't have any little puckers when it dries. And then just put it here. I forgot to mention all of these pieces are exactly the same size as your watercolor paper. That's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So those all line up perfectly together. And there's our matted picture. So you've already done most of the work. That's the most time consuming part of this. And if you can see how on this edge, there's a cut that's not completely um, smooth. I'll show you how to fix that. Didn't plan on doing this, but this works. Take a piece of sandpaper or a fingernail file and just file that down. You can do that with all the edges anyway. It gives it a nice smooth edge. So if you have any rough edges, just use that sandpaper and smooth them out. And that works really great. Okay, so we're going to put this, well actually at this point, we are going to take our sparkle silk. I have a hard time honestly not using this on every single thing I make. I love this stuff so much. So you're going to take this. This is our silk. And it looks like fingernail polish, but one thing you do with finger polish, you're not going to do with this. When you do fingernail polish, the first thing you do is wipe off the brush. But with this, 
you need to shake these up really well because they've got all the sparklies are down at the bottom and so you want to make sure they mix up do not wipe it off and I actually don't want any in that and then you just tap the lid with your finger and just splatter it on your piece and it's so pretty watch this isn't that pretty I love it because it's subtle it gives just this fun subtle sparkling okay so now what we're gonna do I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this on our card so and this silk you'll see dries really fast yep already dry so I'm gonna just like I did before this one doesn't matter if you have a complete line but it's always better if you do okay we're gonna mat this on this Catalina splash paper and that is size four inches by five and a quarter inches and just the thing about the glue that's really nice is you can kind of slide it so just make sure it's on there evenly and then you're just going to do it again and mat it to your card and it's just a standard die standard card sized standard sized card and that is you cut a it's four and a quarter across here and five and a half this way. So you just cut a piece of cardstock right in half at five and a half, and that's your fold. Oh, I'm gonna put some in the middle as well. Okay. All right. We're gonna center that one. Again, it's nice because the glue lets you slide it. You can also use our tape printer for this. But that glue does give you that ability to go in and slide it and make sure everything's straight. Okay, look, we're almost done. Okay, so now we wanna stamp our sentiment. I'm gonna bring back this card so you can see what we're doing. So the sentiment that I used comes from this set. It's called Everyday Script. And hopefully that's not too shiny. My light's shining on it. So it's called Everyday Script and it has these five sentiments and we're using just because. So, and the way I did that, I'm sure you've seen it. You just stamp it out. Um, you can get the die with it. It's got the five dies. You just line it up, tape it down, send it through your machine. Or if you want, you can just use our um, detail shears. I'll show you those. These are great little scissors. You can just cut it out with those. Just leave a little whisper of white around it. Okay, and so with this, oh, here they are. I'm just gonna use our small foam squares to pop this up. And if you, if you need to, which I need to, I'm gonna cut a couple of them in half so I can get those little peninsula. That looks like Florida right there. Um, do that again. Because those are the parts that are gonna bend are those kind of sticky outy parts. Let's do. Stick to my finger. Take this one off. This one off. Let's put one more right here. And then we're just going to take this and just kind of center it down here and pop that up. 
We are so close. Okay. I'm also using this Poppy Bud die set. Okay, the thing about this die set is it was free. If you order $75 worth of product from Fun Stumper's Journey, you get to choose a free item, and this was one of the choices, and this is such a fun one. I've just used the branch. Here's these cute little blossoms that go with it, but I have just used the branch. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I cut two of them, and just like we did our mat, I'm going to glue these on top of each other just to give it a little more dimension to help it show up a little so it doesn't get completely lost. So easy, just use very little glue. You don't want a big mess when you put them together. You don't want glue squishing out all over. So that's so easy. Okay, so my daughter and her two daughters and her husband, they're all staying here right now. And her little daughter is so cute. Um, my little granddaughter, her name's Claire. That's my mom's name. She's named after my mom. And she, oh, we're going to need glue again because we're going to glue this here. I have a betta fish in just a tiny little aquarium, nothing fancy at all. And she is terrified. She looked up and saw that fish and she just looked absolutely terrified and cried. And I just think that is the cutest thing. I can't believe. I've never heard of a little kid being, or anybody being afraid of an aquarium fish, but she's so cute. So I'm just putting this so it butts up against the edge of my frame. And making it look like there's just a tree that's, I think I might want that a little bit higher. Making it look like there's a tree branch that's just falling across the, the view, the window, the whatever. Okay, so that is just there. And then I'm going to take, these are called sweet blooms. They're so cute. And um, just take three of those. They're just pre-made flowers. Makes it really convenient and they're just really sweet. So I'm just gonna, again, use our Journey Craft Glue. I'm just using that. Actually, I should have kind of placed these first. Well, we'll just do it as we go. I'm gonna do one all the way down here because I want it to hang down. <clears throat> and then where should we put these? Yeah, that's cute. Okay. And see this craft glue, I'm telling you. And look, it holds, it grabs, it gets tacky real quick. And so it just holds everything down, which is so nice. Okay. We are almost done. One more step and we're done with this card. So these are called fashion shelves fashion silver pieces and we're just going to take some of these they're just kind of like silver pearls we've also got some gold ones called fashion gold actually we're going to put this up here a bigger one down here and then There, we are done. Look at that. So there it is, those are our cards. Um, the background's always gonna be different because of that technique. But isn't that fun? Doesn't that give the feeling of a, like even though there's no photograph, I think it kind of gives the feel, the feel of a photograph. So that is it. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time.